It's a very quiet fishery. There's probably less than 20 uh, that are actively fishing. Generally, it's a, a father and son traditional business. There's an eel pot, which is basically a, a uh, almost like a basket that goes in the water. And pots are basically uh, cone-shaped metal square mesh pots that have little funnels in them. You put bait in them and eels come in. And then you've got your eel trap, which of course is a, a sort of a metal structure. The eels go in, get the bait, and, and get trapped inside. I use nets, kill nets, put eel pots and traps. I've set uh, eel pots and flight nets, which are like funnel nets. And you set them off the shore and you have like a long leader that runs toward the shore. You know, if you've got 100 pounds of eel, uh, which are usually a good size each, uh, you, you had a good day. And then again, you, you, you sell uh, basically to, to buyers, but really it, it's a lot of time it's that you're bringing them to a local fish store and selling your, your local catch or roadside or you know, sometimes even door to door. I was a teenager. I used to um, sell them house to house. I catch a whole bunch of them and I give them away. After that, I sell them. So I went to Elver's fishing boat back in 96. Elver is, fishery is a uh, similar fishery as the eel fishery. It's you know uh, a valuable resource in, in the Asian markets, uh, but there is some growth as to moving the live elver over into uh, the Asian market, where they're actually looking at you know growing these uh, species through a uh, process such as uh, aquaculture, uh, similar to a fish farm. And a lot of them would say, you know, you're catching the baby eels, you're catching the young eels to go to the future, the future. But I said, holy smokes, there's billions and billions and billions going up there. I believe it's the over-harvesting offshore, you know, getting into the middle of that life stream so that they never get here to start growing and never get back to return to spawn. And well, there's still a, you know, a commercial fishing activity going on, even though the American eel is listed as a species of concern, which concerns me. <laughs> we used to go off spear and eels in the wintertime. It was nothing to catch. 10, 15 dozen. It was nothing. And then they started bringing commercial fishing into our bay. They just wiped it out. It hurts the uh, Bidor Lakes, really, it does. Any big boats that come through that and they s scrape the ground on that, you hurt them. This is a very unique system. It's a soft bottom. The flushing out is not there. The, uh, the temperature is higher, so salinity is lower. These offshore trawlers, draggers, however they're you know, harvesting these eel don't care about the eel. They don't care about the biosphere. They don't care about the, the sustaining the fishery. The ma and pa going in the boat, harvesting that few pounds a day is never gonna harm, you know, our lakes and our rivers here. If there wasn't such things as predation, uh, over harvesting by offshore vessels, quite honestly, the traditional way of harvesting eel commercially would probably last forever. Mm -hmm.